Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. As you can see behind me, there is Audi absolutely everywhere. And today we're at Trezillian Audi in Truro. My car is due at service, so we're in for the long life service, which is an oil change, visual inspection, um, oil filter, and a few other bits. And also the Haldex all wheel drive system is gonna be serviced today. Also five new spark plugs. Gonna be a hefty bill, because we're at the main dealer, but he's doing. As soon as you get here, you see all the lovely examples of the new TTS. Well, not the newest TTS, but look how nice this is. 70 plate TTS, needs a little bit of a wash. These things are awesome. I've always found the TTs a little bit feminine, if I'm honest. But this, look at the back end of that. Pretty mean, eh? Not sure if you'll be able to see inside due to the reflection, but that is lovely, isn't it? Hello! Straight off the bat, you can tell you're at Audi. The uh, customer service is amazing. As soon as I arrived, literally as soon as I parked my car, someone was out to see me. Already knew my name, so they must have taken notice of the number plate that was coming in, because obviously they know what car's arriving for what service. Um, told them I didn't have a mask, so they all came out to me, gave me a briefing on what's going to happen to the car. So, so far, 10 out of 10 service. Well done, Audi Trezillion. Here's one for you, Ben Davey, if you're watching. Nice Audi S3. I think this is the saloon as well. 31,995. I do think this shape is awesome, especially in the RS3s and the S3s. To be honest with you though, even the normal A3s in this shape look really, really smart. Really clean. This thing here is an absolute monster. It's called an Audi e-tron. So it's got cameras for wing mirrors, which a lot of these new, these new latest cars are having, which is mental. Absolutely mental. Not exactly sure where it projects the picture though inside. I'm not sure how well you can see that in there, but it's got a massive screen. Two screens actually. It looks absolutely insane. I believe this is completely electric, hence the e-tron. Um, this is the launch edition as well. Unfortunately, there's no power figures inside the uh, spec sheet inside the windscreen, but this thing is a monster. Just Audis everywhere. And over here, we've got a lovely 2021 Audi S5. Awesome colour as well. I think this must be a... Someone who works here must own this. It's amazing. What's up? Let's go. So you might have just heard that 8V behind me sounds absolutely insane. The bloke's called Ian, he's the guy who checked me in this morning. He's taken the pre-cats out of it, so it sounds amazing. He's got the optional sports exhaust for it too, which obviously the 8V came with. It's got a dynamic pack so the suspension can harden and it's a really, really nice example 8V. As you could see, my RS3 8P is on the ramps. He's just checking all the rust and corrosion. He's gonna sand some of it down and treat it for me, which is something they do. Uh, the rear swing arms is a really common issue where they corrode a little bit faster than the other parts of the car. He said everything's all good. He's now just draining the oil and he's going to put some fresh back in. So I'm currently sat on a little bench behind the Audi showroom where they clean the cars. It's absolutely boiling. You can probably tell I've got a sweaty forehead. But in front of me, it's a pretty nice view. 
the best view of the whole place, if you stand up on the bench you sat on, at 180 degrees, turn around, look at that for a view, mate, that is mint. You may head back over to the showroom. When I came in here, I spied a nice brand new RS6 Avant, so I reckon we'll go get a nice few shots of that while the car's getting washed, so I'll see you in a sec. That RS6 is next level, absolute monster. Massive four litre V8 in there, twin turbo. But yeah, that thing's an absolute beast. I wanted to get some talking footage while inside, but there's loads of people in business meetings, so I didn't really want to disrupt them while talking over the top of them. Um, I got a bit of a dodgy mask, it's snapped in half, so I kind of had to keep it on my face. You may see my reflection in some of those unprofessional clips. But no, I definitely had to get a few shots of that, it's amazing. Car's all finished and clean. Car's looking much cleaner. It's been hoovered inside, really happy with it. Gave me a cracking discount, knocked off like a hundred quid. So really, really happy with that. If you live in the local area of Truro, Trezillion is the place to go to to get your Audi sorted out. Really good bunch of people. Probably sort you out with a discount too. And you know it's all done correctly. So guys, I'm back home. The uh, weather's definitely taken a turn for the worse. Um, it's gonna be pretty windy. So I might have to time-lapse a lot of this so you don't hear a load of wind noise. Um, but we are going to be fitting my Forge 11mm front spacers and 8mm spacers to the rears. Once they're on, I'm going to stick my Team Heco wind deflectors on and I'll show you how that looks at the end. So let's get fitting these. Make sure to click the top right corner of the screen, guys, if you didn't watch last week's video. Which is where I repainted some of the front trims on, on the bumper, which look mint. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. wheels off simply get your spacer stick it on the hub line it up obviously with the holes put your wheel back on and put your extended bolts back in So guys, the first one is on. Here's what it looked like before as a comparison. Here's after. I don't know if camera's gonna do justice. It's hard to see the angles through the uh, camera, but it is so much better. So there we have it with uh, the front set on. It's both 11 mils on the front. So this is the rear before the spaces are on. I will get back to you once I've fitted the eight mils on the rear. So that's one of the eight mils on the rear compared to the standard which is well in the arch. Go, go. What's up? 
Let's go. It certainly fills out some of the gaps a little bit better and adds a little bit more road presence. As you can probably tell in those clips, it's getting quite windy now. So I'm gonna quickly come in the garage and explain what's going on. Just before I wrap up the video, guys, we're gonna quickly install my Team Heco wind deflectors. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put the rear ones on, as I've said in my last video, but the front ones are certainly gonna go on. So we'll put those on first, and I'll decide if we'll put the back ones on after. Sweet. It's just started raining as well, nice. <clears throat> So really simply, you peel off that tape there, peel off that double-sided tape there, slots up into the window frame and there's two clips. One clip's gonna go in here and one clip's gonna go in here and that's gonna separate the wind deflector away so the window can still close and not squish this too much basically. The window goes into the inside of the clip, I'll show you in a second. It might be wise to add your own tape here as well, just for a bit more of security. This is how your clips look and this little tooth wants to be on the inside of the car this is what hooks into the fabric so it can't fall out again so make sure your hook is always on the inside of the car and the smooth side is where your window is <clears throat> i also suggest using a flathead screwdriver to push it up into the actual frame itself because it's going to be really hard just with your fingers If I remember correctly, Team Hacko say you're going to leave your window up once you fixed up the first time for about 24 hours. Stay in my mop, man. Just so the clips and the actual window can adjust to being in that place because it's slightly different, um, slightly different resistance at the top of the window with that piece of plastic in the way. It gives the double-sided tape some time to stick to. So guys, we're finally done. The RS3 is here, all complete. I decided to stick the rear wind deflectors on in the end. It kind of has that nice line and follows through. It did look really good without the rears. However, now that they're on in person, I think it looks much better. You can see it follows through that line quite nicely and looks proper smart. Wheel spacers are all on. Looking really, really nice, nice and chunky. Make sure to watch last week's video, guys, where I resprayed this and I mentioned it earlier on. But, um, it makes a massive difference. It's actually really coming along nicely now. It's all the little touches adding up, making it nice and unique. Well, I'll say unique, more just something that isn't standard, basically. But yeah, next, shortly, will be the springs. Gonna get some new tyres on the back because they're pretty bold. I'm gonna go some, for some uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. Get those on the rear first because they're the worst and then stick 
sticker set on the front as well. Then we're going to refurb the wheels. We're going to go uh, uh, diamond cut chrome with uh, gloss black rotors. I want to keep the original wheels because I think they're proper, proper smart and old school. But yeah, guys, I um, hope you did enjoy today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Comment what you think about the car. Do you like the little touches? What do you want to see next? And um, I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Peace.